All right, I thought I'd do a proper calibration on this uh, on this nice um, Power Designs Incorporated um, 2005 A, and uh, a viewer sent me the uh, uh, manual for this thing. So thank you. So it has a calibration um, procedure in the back and a schematic and stuff. So it's all uh, typed with a typewriter back in the day. Couldn't make any mistakes. He had to type that whole thing with no mistakes. Uh, yeah. So. Hands off to all those people who were in the documentation uh, documentation group. So when I was in a, when I was an R and D engineer, um, we had people su to support us. We had technicians, um, we had PCB layout people, we had assemblers um, who actually did wiring of prototypes and stuff, um, and we had a documentation uh, group. Uh, usually there was a head of the documentation group and then there were some other people who, who ran the documentation, who um, uh, filed it away, put all the right numbers on it, got it approved. You had to go through a whole system to get numbers and it, it, was, a, it was a big ordeal. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the documents, the engineer would like write a first draft and then, and then the other people would, would clean it up and actually submit it and stuff. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's a bunch of people that I need to thank for my career. Um, okay, let's, uh, oh, um, in my last video, uh, some people were asking about the side of the instrument. They couldn't figure out why there was a, a dent in, in the side. And I'd never showed this side of the instrument. Yeah, there's a, a dent, the cover goes over the top and there's this dent here just for this TO, uh, TO3 transistor. So yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty wild that they just put a, a dent in the back. Most of the people just mounted the transistors in the back just kind of flopping around in the breeze. But yeah, they decided to cover this one up. Um, I don't know why, but they did. Uh, okay, so let's flip this thing back around. Um, uh, people say, well, how are you going to calibrate it? What, that, what type of calibration tools do you have? Well, this is good to um, one, two, three, four digits um, after, the, uh, after the main digit. So um, you would say this is uh, four and a half digits. There's only three shown here. This is the fourth digit down here. So um, I do have a, a, a six and a half digit. I have to actually have two six and a half digit voltmeters. So they're way better than this by, by two orders of magnitude. So I will use those as my Cal standard. And those two things agree with one another pretty close. So they are pretty well in calibration. I keep thinking I should go calibrate one of them. Cost me, I think it cost me about $8,500 to get one calibrated. And it's like, why? I'm, I'm in my garage garage and then they're, they're plenty close enough for everything that I ever need to do. So I'm not going to worry about it. Maintenance, general. Uh, okay. So there's a whole section here on adjustments and calibrations. Mechanically zero the meter. That's this thing here. It's, it looks fine to me. It's fine. Um, set the current limit adjustment fully clockwise. That's this here. People were asking about what does it mean to pull? Well, if you want to set a, a compliance current, you, you pull it. And um, let's see here. Why isn't it working? Oh, I'm on, I'm on zero, <laughs> zero volts. There we go. Um, and so it says, ah, you're, you're in current compliance here because I, uh, let's see, why would it say that I'm in in limit, shouldn't say that I'm in limit. Anyway, this is the this is the adjust. Oh, I, that's what it is. So it says it is in current limit mode, and then you adjust it when it's pulled out. So let's say you want to have a, a compliance of uh, 200 milliamps. You want this thing to crowbar when it hits 200 milliamps. Well, then you pull it out, you set it at 200, and you push it back in. Now, if you ever put a load on the output that was greater than 200, then the system crowbars and it protects your circuit or whatever you want to do. So that's. That's what that does. There's a lot of old school. They, they weren't constant current supplies. They didn't have constant current mode, but they had a, a crowbar limit. And that was the way a lot of the old instruments were. All right. So um, let's see here. Uh, voltage calibration. Connect a high precision voltmeter. Yes, we do. Got my Keithley on there. Um, set the range switch to the 0 to 10. And the voltage output controls for zero. Okay, so here we go, zero, 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 zero. Set the A switch to on. It's been warming up a while. If the voltmeter does not indicate 0 0.000 plus or minus one millivolt, adjust the calibrate potentiometer R10. 
Um, hmm. Well, we are actually zero zero. Yeah, we are not in spec. So uh, we need to go up here and uh, we need to have that reading zero. So we need to find R10. Um, so probably somewhere in the manual, it shows me where R10 is. we go. Uh, R10. R10. I think it's the one. Yeah, R10. Zero adjust. Okay. So it is on the uh, side of the instrument. I'll show you here once we get it adjusted. I'll show you what I tweaked. And I need a tweaker. We will go to the zero. It is a 10 turn pot. And we can adjust it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, we have zero, 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 zero. Those are millivolts, too. Uh, zero, zero, zero something millivolts. I say that's a pretty good zero. <laughs> yes, that is very, very good zero. Okay, so what I was adjusting was on the side of the instrument in that little hole there is a 10 turn pot. So that's what I was adjusting. All right, 20 volt adjustment. Make sure this adjustment only after the zero voltage. Okay, we did that. Set the range switch. <sighs> Let's see here. Set the range switch to the 1020 and adjust the supply output to 20 volts. Uh, that would be uh, and supply to, does this go to 20? It goes to nine. Oh yeah, this goes to 10 down at the bottom. Oh, interesting. Okay. So nine, 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 nine. I did use some contact cleaner on these switches too before I started the video. Uh, people are wondering, I use uh, uh, this MG Chemicals contact cleaner. All right, so this should be 20 volts. I've got 999910 uh, down here. So uh, 10 volts, set the vernier control fully clockwise. Yeah, that's, you have to. All right, check that the dots on the vernier control and front panels are aligned. Uh, yeah, the dots on the, oh, I see. Yeah, they're close enough. Okay, they're talking about the little dot here and the numbers on the front and stuff. It seems fine. Check. Uh, let's see. Next page. Next page. Oh, it's raining today. I had to take the dog out and the, put my raincoat on and take the dog out. Set the vernier control to zero. Okay, so why? Connect a higher precision voltmeter. Set the A switch to on. If necessary, adjust the potentiometer R17 until the voltmeter reads 20. This doesn't make any sense to me because this doesn't go to 10. I can't set this to 20. Uh, it's only 20 when I do this, so that doesn't make sense to me. 9999. So right now I should be measuring 9999. And this should be, tw I'm gonna leave it at 20. I'm not sure about their thing there. Okay, so uh, now I need to adjust R17, which where is, where is it? R17. Okay, it's over here on the side too. Down here it says Cal, right? So we need to be watching our meter and uh, there we go, 20. Very nice. 
Okay. All right. So, uh, let's go back to our procedure. Um, mm, 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 check to see dots, measure it to 20, current limit adjust. Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, you can adjust the current limit thing, but I think it's, I don't think I really care about that. Um, yeah, I don't really care about that. Let's see here. Let's see. Current limit adjust range. Uh, troubleshooting symptoms. Capable of reading 600 milliamps accurately. Yeah, whatever. Uh, it, yeah, I don't, I don't really care. I just care about the voltage on this thing, so. You do what you do, I do what I do. Um, triple shoot symptoms and suggested remedies. So, supposedly this thing's calibrated, so uh, let's go ahead and put it back into the zero range. We'll go here to 10 volts. Um, so now we're measuring 10.0003, not bad, not bad. All right, let's go to uh, something easier like nine volts. Let's see if it can do nine volts, nine. Adjust all these knobs. And let's see if our switches are dirty or not. They're very repeatable. All right, so here's nine volts, eight volts, spot on, seven volts, six volts, five volts, spot on. So, I mean, it's using resistive dividers, right? And they're not perfect. So you're not gonna expect perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, but this is perfectly fine for bench use. And if you really care, you could always tweak the bottom knob and make it, make it perfect relatively in a smaller range. And yeah, it doesn't really help. It doesn't really help. Yep. So uh, there we go. Calibration complete. I just don't have room for this on my bench. I wish I did. I need to, I need to put in a second shelf, I think, on my bench to add some more instruments. I thought I had a place for this, but I don't. Um, I've just reorganized my bench just yesterday. I guess I haven't showed that. Uh, let's back up. Um, I used to have my ham radio right there, and I moved it over to the side where my spectrum analyzer used to be. So I've taken out the HP spectrum analyzer, and my, my, my ham radio stuff's over there. My, my stereo microscope's here. So in that spot there, because the new spectrum analyzer is very shallow, I'm able to put this right in front of me, and I have my um, oscilloscope there. So I was thinking about, you know, do I want the oscilloscope here? Or I don't want, and it doesn't really matter. Um, the reason that I chose to keep the oscilloscope over to the right, you say, well, you use it more often, it should be right in front of you. But the problem is that it has a bunch of wires coming out the front all the time, and they would come straight out and be in the way all the time. So right now, I have the, um, the uh, scope probes uh, kind of tape cable tied to keep them out of the out of the way. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it that way. Um, I uh, went ahead and put in my uh, TM5503 right here because it's the same height as the Rigol uh, power supply, and that makes a nice place to set to set my uh, set my Rigol on. Um, now the uh, Let's move this over a little bit. The spectrum analyzer I built a little shelf for um, a piece of uh, aluminum, uh, sheet aluminum, and some standoffs here. So it's up, oh, up above the bench now, um, which accomplish, accomplishes two things. It, it, it makes it easier to read and photograph the uh, spectrum analyzer. Plus, it gives me a little bit of storage underneath um, to slide some things in. So. Um, there's things that I just keep on my bench all the time, my magnifiers and stuff, and uh, protoboard stuff, uh, different um, capacitors and, and my favorite resistors and stuff like that. I keep that under there. 
and then my little uh, RF generator I had underneath the spectrum analyzer. It was hiding under there for a long time. So now it's going to hide under this spectrum analyzer. And the other thing that I keep in here are the, uh, uh, the e, uh, uh, magnetic and electrical field uh, non-contact probes for the, for the spectrum analyzer. Um, and then, like I said, I've got, uh, this is able to be configured. So if I need a pulse generator, I could pop that plug in in or, you know, something or other. Um, I was doing something that needed a, a counter. And so I plug that in. I think I would normally just leave the little function generator in here. I think, I think it's my favorite single wide, uh, that little, um, function generator that has different different signals and stuff on it. I mean, I've got one right here, right? So um, it, it, it's really a toss up of, of what's more functional. Um, sometimes this, this is easier to use. Sometimes this is easier to use. This is a complete arbitrary um, generator here, but um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that was a quick calibration of my little power supply. And uh, yeah, I think it'll come in handy sometime.